My boy Obi went in! Let's go! Oh my god, you know what? Going in like an absolute savage, this episode went in on a level and explored facets of this series that we've never really seen taken to this extent before. The level of hype with this episode coming off of the cliffhanger of last week's episode, seeing what actually transpired in this week's episode, and the cliffhanger and setup for next week, this arc is insane, dude. Never would I, did I imagine myself, you know, coming in here with this level of exuberance talking about Shirayuki. And it's not because how the series normally is with its normal tone and the focus on the kind of romantic elements and the day-to-day, -day, you know, slice of life elements and the character development. I love that. I absolutely love that. And that's what I adore about Shirayuki. But seeing these battles, Obi versus Itoya, man, these little skirmishes, it was real. Especially the second clash when Obi hunted them down. Let, let, let's dive into it. Akagami no Shirayuki Hime, episode 17. You already know. We're, we're, we're talking about Obi, right? You're talking about my best boy for quite some time, and then we'll move on to everything else. First of all, Bones. The battle animation, like, the, the, the look and aesthetic of Shiriki has always been god tier. It's always been absolutely beautiful. The color palettes, the illustrations, the art, and the, and the base animation is clean. But this battle animation, especially the second skirmish, like I said, between Obi and Atoya, was so fucking fluid and sexy, dude. Seeing him toss the water container at him, Obi just bursts through it, pins the man to the wall, stabs the kunai into the tree, and it has it at his throat. The piercing gaze that he gives him, you see the fury in his eyes. I'm just like, oh my god, my boy Obi is a savage. And the thing about it is, he wasn't even so much angry and, and raging against Itoya and Kazuki for kidnapping Shiryuki as he was upset and livid with himself for being unable to protect her. And to see that cool, calm facade that he put on, only to hear you, only to see him explode and slam his hand against the wall, only for Zen to hear that he's already started, you know, chased after them as soon as they arrive at the Tambunun Castle. I'm just like. Obi is amazing, seeing him bound through the forest, tracking their trail, cornering them, his fucking rage that it was uncontrollable. Hey boy, dude, and, and these are his feels for Shiroyuki pouring out at the same time, and him, you know, the, at the same time, it's also on that level of Zen entrusted her to him, and his respect for Zen also carries through. He was also frustrated with himself for not being able to save her in that moment, for not being skilled enough to carry out his mission. So, to see all of that together, Obi. It made the episode for me. It made it extraordinarily hype from that first scene. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's we're going to transition. Because Rona and Eugenia coming into the room was definitely the reason that Obi lost to Toya in the first bout. Done. I don't care what anybody says. Yes, Toya has some skills. He's beast. He looks like a fucking monster. But he couldn't have stopped Obi. And based on the kind of dynamic and what ended up happening to Kazuki being taken by, you know, the pirates, the Sea Claw pirates... I guarantee you that Itoya is stronger than Kazuki. So Obi would have been fine in that situation if it weren't for Rona. Normally I would have blamed them, but I love Rona. And seeing how sad she was and that she was blaming herself, I responded instantly exactly like Obi. He comforts her, he tells her everything's going to be okay and that it's not her fault, only to rage and then break that facade 10 minutes later, you know, blaming himself and being completely angry with himself. I'm just like, Obi is a f Boss, he's crazy. It's absolutely amazing. That's why I love him, and that's why he's my best boy. But that aside, diving into this episode as a whole, first thing that I want to mention: Kazuki and you know Itoya confirmed to be working for the Mountain Tribe, and this basically confirms my theories by extension as far as Shirayuki's heritage and everything like that. It, it debunks the first theory as far as her being from royalty, but it confirms the fact that in what I was talking about last week, that she was most likely part of this mountain tribe, and that Kazuki has been sent by her parents, or at the very least, just her father, based on how Kazuki is like, oh, you know, Oyaji will be so happy to to see us return and everything like that, and the conversation he has with Umihebi before she backhands the shit out of him, and she's talking about the, this old man that's the leader of the mountain tribe and everything like that, and kind of getting one up on him by capturing Shirayuki 
Kazuki and, and, and whatnot, assuming that they're just, you, you know, capturing them to sell them, and she also wants Kazuki back as part of the Sea Claw Pirates, which we find out about his backstory and how he was involved in them, which clearly eliminates any possibility of Kazuki being related to Shiryuki, and it being, you know, him calling him Oyaji actually being his old man. It's more in my, in my sense, kind of like, you know, Oyaji being referred to as, you know, his boss, something like that. So... That, that clarifies pretty much everything. I'm 100% on Shiryuki's origins as far as that's concerned now, and based on how this is being set up, I don't even care if I'm spoiled at this point. You can you can confirm it or debunk it for me. I, I really don't care at this stage because I, I feel secure in this theory. If it does it turn out to be this way, I really don't know what else could really be going on here. So that aside, finding that out was amazing. Raj's development over the course of this arc has been incredible seeing his reaction to shiryuki's capture how he was so angry with himself and the words that he spoke to sakaki where he's basically like she's the only person who takes me seriously and i couldn't even protect her in my own castle and seeing him wanting to resolving himself as zen appears before him and resolving himself to you know help zen in any way possible and tracking shiryuki down and remembering the promise that he made with her to become a respectable prince and everything like that Raj is becoming an absolute amazing character, absolutely incredible character. To think that back during the first episode of first season, I was absolutely disgusted with this man is amazing to see how far he's come and grown. And at the same time, it's a result of his bond with Shiryuki. So to see how many people she's influenced like that is incredible. And, and, and the strength of this woman who is currently scared out of her mind, dude. To see her shaking like that. And, and I can't blame her because Umi Hebi, which while I will say this, she's sexy as fuck. She's absolutely beautiful. I, I I love her design, but she's an absolute fiend, dude. And seeing her get in Shiryuki's face, and you see the 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 gaze that she gives her, dude, those eyes yet again, and she's just like, you can never return. I'm just like, oh, my God, she's an absolute fiend. And to see Shiryuki cowering in fear, she was actually hiding under the covers at a certain point. I was like, damn, this incredibly strong woman who has never faltered in any situation, even when she was, you know, kidnapped back in the day by Mihaya, she still maintained a resolve. So to see her breaking down like this, and it's crazy because she was kidnapped once and then kidnapped from her kidnappers being Kazuki, which I also like this episode, bringing in the Sea Claw Pirates solidifies the fact that Kazuki really means her no ill, you know, no harm, no ill will, and it's just a matter of him truly believing he's returning her to the place she belongs, which is most likely by her parents' side, and returning to the mountain tribe. So, now that we have all of that out of the way, Zen arriving, you know, Kiki and Mitsuhide in tow, of course, and his whole response to the situation was masterful, and this is why, this is why Zen is not that far behind Obi, man. The way he speaks to Raj, actually apologizing himself, and blaming himself for not, you know, sharing the information about Kazuki with him. Yo. And, and then his follow-up question is not even in any sort of extreme rush. The first thing that he says, did she spend her days here happily? Did she smile? Just completely concerned about the well-being of Shiryuki to a T, regardless of, you know, situations that he can't control at this moment. So, yo, Zen is an absolute boss. We got to see the king of Tambarun for the first time and he gives Zen pretty much full reign to go ahead and conduct an investigation and hunt down Shiryuki's kidnappers so that, that that was nice to see as well I was always wondering about the kings of these various countries hopefully we're going to see the king of Clarinus and then the queen of Clarinus as well at some point but that aside, I mean, Izana is, is based, Izana is amazing for me, but I, I there has to be somebody above him or otherwise he'd already be king but that aside episode as a whole just I, I can't believe there was such a tense and hype episode of shiryuki that didn't really focus on any i mean it definitely had a lot of character development inherently and showcasing these character dynamics which i love and the attention to detail in each person's response was amazing but i i just never expected to be this exuberant and hype about Shiryuki and Raja's development, like I said before, is amazing. Even the king of Tambor himself is speaking to Sakaki and he's like, I thought he just invited her here on a whim. To see him actually this concerned and manning the fuck up, he's not cowering in fear right now. 
Yo, Siraj's just, development has been absolutely amazing. But the shining star of this episode was, without a doubt, Obi for me. There, there's no question. Next week, I want to see Obi going in like a beast, and I want to see Goddess Kiki going in like a beast. I don't I don't need to really see Zen and Mitsuhide go in. We've seen it many, many times in the past. I want to see Kiki greatness, and I want to see my boy Obi continue to beast. That's what I need to see with next week's episode as they go up against the Sea Claw Pirates. But that's pretty much it. Let me know your thoughts, and I'm out. Peace.